Welcome to labmins.com. If you have watched our previous eyes videos on machine authentication, whether it was for PEEP or EPTLS, you will see the authentication process only happened at login page. So the problem with that is, since the user authentication relies on the previous successful machine authentication cache on ICE, if for some reason that cache is expired or lost, for example due to node restart, user might not be able to get onto the network unless they force themselves to go through the machine authentication again by locking off or reboot. Eep chaining solves that issue. In this video, we will look at how to configure Eep chaining on Cisco ICE. So a little bit of background on Eep chaining. Eep chaining uses Eepfast, and if you're familiar with Eepfast, there's a concept of PAC or PSC. So PAC is like a form of credential that can be manually created and transported out of band from one endpoint to another, or you can also automatically distribute it. Usually an automatic distribution is a more convenient method because that we can do it on the fly, but between the two endpoints, they need to build like a secure channel to automatically send that credentials. And this is done through EPTLS, just like a regular EPTLS. Once a secure channel is set up, PAC can be sent from one endpoint to another. And once the, both endpoints have received the PAC, they can use those PAC to negotiate in what they call an outer tunnel. Okay, so the outer tunnel is a secure channel that the two endpoints also use within that tunnel to perform an inner authentication or exchange. And this inner authentication can be more than just one. So it can be done back to back. And for us, that is going to be a user authentication as well as machine authentication. So this is why it's called Eep chaining. So basically a, a multiple Eep authentication within a single transaction. So that way the machine and user authentications always happen together and user no longer has to rely on having to wait for the, or be at the lock-in page for the machine authentications to happen. So even after user is locked into the machine, they can still perform both user and machine authentication, which is kind of solve our problems. Okay, so to date, uh, to my knowledge, only a Cisco AnyConnect secure mobility client supports Eep chaining, so, but it's actually a, a module within the AnyConnect client, which is called Network Access Manager or NAM. So we need to install, or you need to install that module uh, in addition to the AnyConnect client itself. For example, if you use that for AnyConnect VPN already. Okay, so now that we understand the concept of Eep, cha Eep chaining, let's take a look at our lab setup. So here we have a Cisco ICE running version 112 installed the IP.102. We have domain controller and a certificate authority server at dot 40. We're going to be using a domain computer that has the AnyConnect client and NAM module install to perform Eep chaining. And once it's successfully authenticated, we're going to allow or permit all the access. We're also going to have a non-domain computer, again, with the AnyConnect client install. And once the machine tries to access the network, it will fail the authentication because the machine is not really part of the domain or it's not a corporate owned machine. But as long as the user pass authentication, we will, let's say, just uh, give them internet access only. We're also going to be using two AD users. One's called admin one, which is part of a wireless user AD user group. And admin one will have access to wireless, while the employee one, which is not a part of wireless user, would not have access to wireless. So even with Eep chaining, the ability to grant user access based on the group membership is still there. Okay, so let's begin our uh, configuration on ICE. So here with the web interface, we're going to start with authentication policies. Let's take a look at authentication policies. Here we know that the we're dealing with EFAS. So let's say we want to lock that down to just allow the protocol EFAS, which means we have to create the policy elements results. Okay, and then authentication, allow protocol, and let's add, and for the name, we can call it, let's say, LM EFAST only. And we're going to pretty much uncheck everything but EFAST. So uncheck TLS, uncheck P, EFAST, for EFAST right here, there's a use pack. And don't use pack. We definitely want to use pack. We want to allow all these provisioning. So allow in-band pack provisioning of the automatic 
provisioning we talked about. And we also want to mach enable machine authentication. And definitely we want to enable e chaining. Okay, now we submit and we can go back and create our authentication rule. So with that one X, you know, duplicate above, we'll call it, let's say, LM dash wire dash dot one X. This will be for wired. And for the protocol, it would be EFAS only, enable. And for the user database, we want to point to AD. There you go. And the reason being the inner authentication method, we're going to be using PEEP. So it's still a username password base. You have also have an option to do TLS for the inner authentication method. But in this lab video, we're just going to do PEEP. And now we're going to have to create one for wireless since we're going to do both wide and wireless in this video. So duplicate below. And that's going to be WLAN dot one X here compound condition point to the wireless we use the same LME fast only so uh, that's the wrong one so the default there okay and the same thing AD local okay here we save Okay, but since we are going to allow user that passed the user authentication but failed the machine to only have internet only access, we need to create a new downloadable ACL. So here we go to policy elements, results, okay, authorization, downloadable ACL. Let's click add, and we want to call it LM internet only, and Let's make sure I have this right. I already create a template for this. So let me just copy and paste and we'll go through that quickly. So first, enable or allow DSCP, allow UDP 53, which is DNS, and then allow communications to the iServer itself. Then we are going to deny anything that goes to the private IPs or RFC 1918, and then we permit everything else, which should be just the internet. Okay, so again, just to reiterate, the syntax for downloadable, downloadable ACL has to be precise, otherwise it would not work. Okay, now we have to do the same thing on the wireless LAN controller. So let's log into the wireless LAN controller. Since wireless LAN controller, or in wireless authentication, we use the name ACL that resides in the wireless LAN controller. Go to security, access control list. And we already have one created called LM Internet Only with the same name. And this is essentially the same thing with allowing DSCP, DNS, ICE communication, deny all the private IPs or any traffic that's distant to private IPs, and then anything else will be allowed. Okay, so that's is also done. Now we need to create a authentication or authorization profile. Let's go add. First one we'll call for the wired LM internet only. It's going to be DACL with LM internet only. Here we save. And we also have to create one for wireless. So LM WLAN internet only. Instead of DACL, go to airspace ACL name. And that one has to be LM internet only. Make sure the name matches. Then submit. Okay, so now we have authorization profile. We need to create condition. Authorization conditions. Let's create new ones. And let's duplicate from wired later to the one X. And here we're going to take care of both uh, user and machine. So let's call it something like LM wired user machine. And we're going to add additional conditions. One would be the EAP tunnel type. Under network access, there's EAP tunnel equal EFAS. And then 
attributes. Another one is EAP authentication method. There you go. A network authentication method will be MSChap v2 since we're doing PEEP. And the last condition would be to condition on whether or not the both user and machine authentication succeeds. So here, EAP chaining results equal. So you have different options with different combinations. So you, we want to use both user and machine to succeed. Okay. So submit. All right. Now we've got wired user and machine. Let's duplicate that. Now we want to do one that's user succeed, but machine fail. So let's call it user only. And here we pick user succeeded, machine fail. So submit. Now we pretty much have to do the same thing for wireless. So we're going to duplicate wireless 802.1x. Okay, add network access, deep tunnel, deep fast, add network access, authentication method. MS chat v2 and that's one actually there's one more so this one would be network access eap chaining results both succeeded and we want to also condition on the group membership so only a user with the correct group membership can access oh, wireless so it should be external group. And then we have a wireless user right here. Okay, so submit that. And then let's duplicate. Uh, it looks like we forgot to, um, looks like we forgot to change the name, change the name. So let's change it to LM VLAN user machine. Save. Okay, now let's go back to the VLAN user machine and then we duplicate that and make it user only for wireless and change that to user succeed and machine fail one more time. Submit. That should be all set. Now we can go and configure the authorization rules. Let's do insert new below. Let's call it LM wired user machine condition from library. We want wired user machine. And if both succeeded, then we want to permit all. So LM permit all done. Duplicate below. Do one for user only and there would be the wired user only and if that's the case we want to do internet only so lm permit or lm internet only there we go we're going to be doing one for wireless so insert new uh, duplicate below and that would be VLAN user machine this will also be uh, the VLAN user machine and we want the the VLAN permit all, uh, permit all. And duplicate below with the user only. And actually, you can expand that here. User only. WLAN user only. 
And that will be WLAN um, internet uh, only. Let's see where that is. Here. Okay. All right, now that we save, we should have pretty much everything configured on ICE at this point. Now we're going to turn our attention to the configuration on the client side.